Our next speaker tonight, Matt Westcott, has been writing music and demos on the ZX Spectrum for over 20 years. He's had some amazing career with that. He's won uh, competitions at Assembly, the biggest demo party there is. And uh, tonight he's going to take all of that experience and try and condense it to you in an hour. He's going to teach you how to write a chip tune from scratch. And best of all, you're going to get to choose the chip tune. So have a think what you'd like to see turned into all its 8-bit glory. And please give a warm welcome to Matt Westcott, also known as Gas Man. Hey, thanks very much. So um, given that you've uh, come to this talk, so hopefully you have sort of, uh, at least a rough idea of uh, what chip tunes are, at least at the level of it's that sort of blippy bloppy video game music. Uh, it's like uh, many retro things. It's uh, kind of something that's been uh, borrowed as a kind of as an aesthetic choice. Uh, so, uh, if you're making music on something like Ableton Live or Logic, then you can sort of easily sort of find these uh, sort of chip tune plugins and uh, to make the music uh, in this style. And uh, but it's. Um, it's only really when you get to doing it on the original machines that sort of uh, where chip tunes originated from, like the Spectrum, the Commodore 64, the NES, that you can really sort of get a sense of how it would the, the whole sort of style of it uh, has uh, been born out of the uh, sort of technical constraints and it kind of emerged as ways of uh, getting around uh, the, those constraints. So. Uh, Hopefully that's uh, what I'm going to be able to uh, communicate to you today. Uh, so, uh, yeah, as, as you mentioned, uh, I'll shortly be uh, sort of taking a request for a, a, a pop song to uh, cover as a Spectrum chip tune, which I'll uh, attempt to, uh, sort of to sort of cover in an hour and uh, sort of explain the process as I go along. But um, while you're sort of think th thinking of uh, requests, I'll sort of give a bit of background to, uh, the, to the kind of uh, parameters that we're working in and where the chip in chiptunes comes from. So the, uh, the, the, the original home computers, uh, when they were being designed and they wanted to add audio support, uh, they were very much in the mindset of doing the simplest thing that could possibly work, which meant um, wiring up the front going from one of the, for the, uh, the CPU's output ports, wiring that straight up to a speaker so that if you output a one, it would send a voltage across the speaker. If you output a zero, it would turn that off. And by alternating between those two states at a given rate, then you would uh, create an audio wave. And the advantage of this method is because it's all been done in software is that there is basically no limits audio quality aside to the sort of sounds that you could produce uh, you could do speech synthesis of multi-channel audio uh, if you can program it then you can do it um, but the uh, real disadvantage of that is that you can't really do anything else at the same time uh, because it's you well, well if, if you're going to be sort of turning this speaker on and off at a precise rate, you, um, you can't just sort of set, set the CPU to say, OK, set a timer to do this thing while I go off and do my own thing. Um, you, you've got to be sort of, to, even if you're just waiting, you need to sort of count cycles to make sure everything is uh, happening at precisely the right time. Um, so, um, so it doesn't mean you can't, you're very limited in what else you can do sort of at the same time. Uh, I'll play just an example of uh, a load of Manic Miner, which is um, famous as uh, one of the first ever ch uh, games with, uh, with background music. And uh, you can kind of hear that it's got this very choppy sort of quality, and that's because it is literally having to divide its time, like a fraction of a second at a time, playing the playing the music and then stopping to actually do the next bit of game and then playing the next bit of music and um, people just they, they wanted to do better than this so uh, the uh, next generation of home computers in including the uh, the Spectrum 128K and the Commodore 64 they started uh, shipping with a built-in uh, sound chip uh, that um, 
Well, this, uh, unlike the uh, CPU-based approach that we've just shown, uh, this is uh, it's a fixed capabilities. Uh, so it's usually it would be something like you have three or four tone generators, uh, and and th they, they 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 would just be able to play a square wave or a sawtooth wave and nothing else. You'd be able to sort of set the, uh, the, the, the speed of these generators and their volume, uh, but you're kind of stuck with the, uh, the sounds that they uh, provided. But the uh, big upside, of course, is that uh, you, these things can run under their own steam uh, if you, once you've actually told it to start playing a note at a particular frequency, it will just carry on doing that until you tell it to do something else. So that's, um, yeah. So in, in the, so in the case of the Spectrum, that sound chip, it was the, uh, the AY38912, which is also used in a few other machines like the uh, Amstrad CBC. For the uh, Commodore 64, there's the uh, very famous uh, SID chip. And yeah, so. That's um, basically the the, uh, the the constraints that we're working w within. It's um, so you don't have the flexibility of that you have for doing things in software. But um, there's ju just you can and there's not enough flexibility to like totally reinvent the sound it makes. But there's sort of enough uh, to be sort of creative enough with it. So uh, having said that, I think it's sort of time to sort of take requests. Um, I think. It's, it in fairness to people who aren't feeling like shouting stuff out, um, if if you uh, want to sort of come to the microphone, if you've got an idea, uh, or or shout out if you want. So, okay. Anyway, yeah. I see some <laughs> theme from the Archers. Wow, that is <laughs> it's, it's a really hardcore audience here. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, could go that. And any sort of other suggestions? I I I kind of li like to sort of. To yeah, pick and choose uh, um, well, what could ones that I know very well. So, yeah. Could people come up to the microphones yep. if they want to make suggestions, please? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. So yeah. Does this work? Uh, slightly, yeah, a bit quiet, but. The Pokemon <laughs> theme. Pokemon theme. Oh, I don't know if I know that one. It's, uh, <laughs> any others? Sledgehammer. Ooh, I kind of don't know. I think I think I'm going to stick with the, the theme to the archers. I've I've, I've kind of not done the uh, done something like that. Oh, another. All oh, right. Oh, I've I kind of already done that one in, in my sort of illustrious twenty-year career. So. Yeah. Oh, traffic. Oh, that's I do know that one. It's that it's kind of minimal. I. I I, I like the idea of the theme to the arches. It has to be a tune I know very well, and I think, yeah, it, I've, I've kind of not not done something of that sort before. But uh, okay, we can kind of uh, yes, <laughs> give it a bit of a, a sort of yeah, <laughs> drum and bass remix or something. So uh, yeah, let, let's go for that. Okay, so um, here we go. Let's uh, so fire up the tracker then. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, let's do a clear song. Um, all right, well, hang on, let's just give a quick burst of this. This is my first ever attempt to do a, a, a chip tune under time constraints. This was 15 minutes of American Pie. <laughs> and, and that's as far as it got. I didn't manage the whole the nine minute track, so unsurprisingly. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, Sound Tracker. This is the um, the, the software I use. This is it's running sort of on the uh, real Spectrum, or in this case, an emulator. Um, this, so this is an original bit of software, like created in back in 1991, I think. There are actually better trackers around, such as a Vortex Tracker, uh, for uh, which is uh, it runs on Windows, also on Wine for Linux and uh, Mac people. Um, the reason I'm using this isn't out of some sort of hipster authenticity thing. It's just that this is what I'm used to. There's nothing worse than to, when you're in the, your creative flow, having to sort of stop and remember how the software works. So yeah, this is just what I'm used to. So uh, let's um, so let's clear this song and okay. So as you might have just seen there, this is the uh, the the bit in the middle. This is where all the actual 
real music writing happens. It's sort of divided into these three columns, which are they correspond to the three sound generators that you get on the spectrum. Um, you have so. So what we can do is um, we and the and the vertical axis is time. So uh, if I sort of start sort of entering some notes. Um, so the, these is just using the standard musical note names um, yeah, and let's spread them out a bit here and as I, I saw there and if, if I start this playing then you can kind of see that it's uh, the time is scrolling past and the uh, white row is the one that's uh, showing the note that's playing at the moment. And the reason you didn't hear anything playing right there is that I haven't actually set up any uh, sounds yet. And uh, these, this is where we need to sort of go for the uh, sample editor. Now, calling samples is a bit of a misnomer here because this kind of originated from the the, uh, s the, the trackers on like the Amiga, where this whole concept started off. Where, well, it samples in music usually means uh, a clip of recorded audio that you're triggering at precise times, perhaps slowing it down, speeding it up to vary the pitch. And that was, on, in the case of the Amiga, that was the building blocks that you were using to build up your song. But since we're restricted to the sounds that the, that the sound chip can generate, uh, the meaning of samples is kind of a bit hacked around a bit in our case. So uh, what we have, I'll edit sample number one here. This is, uh, rather than it being sort of a real audio waveform, this is um, it's a graph of how the volume will vary over time. As I said, we're, we're pushing data to the sound chip every 50th of a second, so each of these bars is a sort of, uh, 50th of a second uh, uh, slot. So um, let's uh, start creating um, so this, uh, a waveform that sort of starts loud and sort of, uh, dies away. So the top half is uh, that's, this is the uh, volume over time. And since uh, so the archers theme, then it's uh, since it's a do 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 do, it's very sort of staccato. So uh, we want a note that kind of uh, dies away quickly. So I think it's going to be sort of this sort of. Uh, fortunately, sir, being a spectrum program, it's all kind of very fiddly to actually do the editing. So um, yeah, that's. So I think that's a bit more volume there. So that's. Um, that's kind of the, so we've got the, uh, the sort of fading away fairly quickly sound. You'll notice it's sounding a bit sort of noisy th uh, there, and that's because um, the AY chip can also do uh, noise, which is what this uh, second uh, half is, uh, is controlling. So I'll uh, set these to one to mute them out. Uh, sorry, I have to. It's, ve it's also very annoying how you get this click that's actually louder than the music you're, pl you're playing. But. Uh, Yes, I might get around to explaining why it's one to turn it off. It's uh, all sort of, it's because it's uh, kind of talking to the chip at a fairly low level, and this is, and this happens to be the how it, it works at that level. So now we've got um, we've we've masked out the noise, and now we've got this pure tone. It's just, again, it's because it can only produce square waves. It's this is a square wave sound that's dying away fairly quickly. So um, I can sk I'll skip past the um, the this screen. This is actually showing how the sort of how the the uh, the tone will vary over time. But I think we want this to be kind of a, a flat note at the moment. So uh, now we can uh, get on with um, editing, putting in our notes. Let's uh, clear these out. So we've created that as sample one. So so. Um, Let's see. Let's see what where, what note do you want to start on? I think yeah, that that's I think it's yeah, I think that works. <laughs> so, okay. So what one th one uh, important decision at this point is what the uh, the tempo is going to be, how quickly we scroll past here, because uh, you can only put the notes on the you can't put them to between rows. So you probably don't really have much much choice here um, because it's. It's like did did so. It's going to be like da 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 da. So, so.
Uh, I did a second bit while I'm here. Uh, no, that's one place. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> So, incidentally, um, it's the, the bottom row of keys here, the ZX CVBNM is like the musical keyboard, so it's just all very sort of lo fi, no MIDI or anything. Uh, okay, uh, right, so let's sort of hear how this sounds. It's probably going to be uh, way too fast at the moment. Uh, not too bad. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good start. Okay. <laughs> so. I think I will slow that down slightly, so delay six, which so that's, uh, since as I say, everything is in units of a 50th of a second, so that will be, uh, that's uh, advanced things every six 50ths of a second, so that's. Uh, okay, um, let's see what next. Um, I think there's a, there's a couple of notes. What's bugging me slightly is there's some longer notes that could do with uh, sort of being a, another sample. Um, so in trackers, you don't really have a concept of setting the length of a note. If you want a longer note, that just means a sample that takes long to die away. So let's um, let's do this. Um, okay, let, let's uh, make it so it kind of sticks at that level here. And yep, again, this is very fiddly and clicky. And again, we want to mask out all of the uh, noise. Okay, that's uh, a bit more like it. So, uh, so, so far we've just sort of specified sample one at the beginning there, which and then the zeros means it will carry on playing sample one. So let's. Uh, da, da, da. So that's the one who wants to be a longer note. Da, 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 da. Okay, uh, so. Oh, and I've, I've kind of forgotten to actually set it back to one again for the shorter notes. So well, let's do that again. One, two, one, two, two, one. Oh, I need to do it for the second half as well. So uh, yeah, let's hear that again. So yeah, you can hear the uh, the sort of um, the the sort of difference between those two note lengths there. Um, so since um, unlike sort of a lot of the uh, music that the youth is listening to today, this is kind of in three four time. Well, it's well in compound time, which means that. Um, by default, you have uh, 64 rows in this, and since we, we all probably want to change that to a 48 because it's all in in threes, so or 47 in fact because it's zero based, just to confuse you, uh, and yeah, so. Yeah, so now that's about to sort of repeat again. So the uh, as a space saving measure, because memory is always very tight on the spectrum, uh, it's the uh, the song you're making is divided into what's known as patterns, which are kind of musical phrases. And uh, since uh, you're yeah, a, a lot of music is kind of quite repetitive. If you've got uh, your standard song structure where it's verse, chorus, verse, chorus, you don't want to have multiple copies of that data. So when you're, so you can actually define your song as uh, as kind of a, a sequence of these patterns possibly repeating. So in the case of like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, it might be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then three, four if there's another chorus. And that way you're not storing multiple copies of the same data. Uh, so. Yeah, at the moment we're just only working with uh, one pattern at the moment. We'll see if we get time to sort of do a bit more of the song. But um, let's uh, sort of make this uh, let's be a bit more adventurous about the uh, the 
uh, about the, these samples here. So this long note here, we can uh, so we we can sort of add a bit of like vibrato. Like so, let's imagine we're sort of play, playing the Archer's theme on an overdriven electric guitar. Well, we're, it might be a bit too much to hope for, but uh, we we can sort of a bit of when it's doing the long notes. Doo -doo -doo, so we can do a, a sort of uh, a bit of vibrato effect on there, so that. Um, yeah, so, so that yes, adds a bit more life to it. As I say, th this is the uh, this is you know like well this this these columns on the left here. It's actually just one one column again. It's sort of the defining what happens over time and every fiftieth of a second. Uh, at the moment, everything it's we're not adjusting the pitch at all. It's all just one flat tone. Uh, let's say um, let's shift it up a bit uh, here. Uh, these are in units of it's complicated, um, <laughs> yes. um, because it, again, because it, this is all addressing the chip on a very low level, which is kind of incidentally why we're using this sort of interface and not kind of conventional like music sort of yeah m musical notation. Um, so it's this is kind of adjustments to the period of a wave in clock cycles, which also means as you're going to the higher frequencies. These notes have these little adjustments have a bigger effect, so it's all a bit of a black art to adjust it all. So hopefully you'll, so hopefully you might be you'll hear here if I stop it at this point. It's um, it's ve very subtle, but it's kind of it's. I'll move to a bit more to. You might you might just be able to hear it's it's, it's sort of ramping sort of up in tones at the end slightly. That's a bit more. Whoop. A, a, a bit, kind of. Uh, so let's. So that's. So that's going up and down again, and then it's all very subtle. We don't want it to actually change the note we're playing in any sort of fundamental way. And let's do that sort of in the uh, negative direction here. So. So you, you can hear this sort of sound there. So yeah, I think that is kind of, uh, sort of what, what we're going for there. Um, so we can see if we play that back, we can hopefully hear the effect on the actual song here. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of, you hopefully you can sort of hear the effect there. Um, let's uh, get a bit of a bass line uh, sort of, uh, going here. So uh, let's uh, start uh, entering stuff into the uh, this uh, second. Uh, um, it's a, it's a second channel of uh, audio, so so down to sort of octave two. I think I should do it. Um, let's. I'll use um, sample one for this, just uh, because we don't really want the sort of vibrato thing going on here. So let's see how this is. Um, it probably goes down, down to, down to A. Down, down to Okay, so uh, let's see what that's uh, giving us. That's uh, kind of working. <laughs> yep. uh, so uh, let's on to uh, drums, which uh, I'm sure the original theme didn't have, but uh, let's uh, go wild here. So this is where uh, we start sort of getting the um, the noise side of things into play. Um, so although we st we still need to sort of define something here, so th because it's still using the same volume control. So let's see. We want to. Uh, Let's get so let's do a snare drum here. So we want that to be again to sort of fading away fairly quickly over time. Let's sort of do something like uh, this, and yep. So again, we've got that sort of uh, that sort of quite noisy thing. We, we we want a bit of tonal 
content in there, so I'll leave that. Uh, I, I could mask that out completely, and then it would just be noise. But I think we need we need a, a bit of uh, tone as well. So the second half is actually controlling the. Uh, Again, this is where it kind of gets hazy and low level. The pitch of the noise, I know white noise doesn't really have a pitch, but because it's actually done by, uh, um, by, by sort of, of adding sort of ra random ones and zeros, and this is controlling uh, yeah, how quickly it changes from one to zero. It kind of changes the, uh, the kind of the, 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 the flavor of, of the noise, I suppose. And so, so if we... Uh, so here you can hear that that's kind of a, a very uh, sort of quite a high noise uh, noise, and then if, if I take that down, you can hear that's kind of going a bit deeper, and as you go down until the right at the top is that. So it's like <coughs> rather than. Tch -tch -tch. So um, oh, we've got some uh, extra white noise uh, sort of uh <laughs> coming from outside by the sound of things. Um, okay, so as a sort of snare drum sound, we want sort of that sort of slowly fall, so it goes. That's, that's, that's so. Uh, let's go start some. Again, this is sort of backwards and confusing. Just, uh, but uh, again, it matches the way that the uh, chip works. So let's. Um, so let's get that one to sort of go um, down to to the lowest uh, frequency there. So. So you can kind of hear, hear a bit there. Um, maybe we'll make it uh, reach the, uh, the the lowest bits faster. So this, it's kind of going in a way. So that's kind of what we're aiming for. But I think what we also need to do here is um, make sure that the uh, sort of the tone content also uh, sort of goes uh, right down to zero. Uh, well, not just zero; it plummets down. Uh, for some reason, you get the option of sort of adjusting this by either one or by 128, and nothing in between. So uh, let's uh, do this a, a few uh, multiples of 128. So the idea here is that we're kind of making it st stop sounding like a tone, because you could still kind of identify that as a specific musical note, and that we're sort of taking this out. So it's it's sort of going sort of down to the ground really quickly so that you can't really identify it as a particular note. Uh, so I think that might be enough. Okay, it's kind of turning a bit bass, bass notey there. Let's, um, uh, no, I don't, wrong way. Let's sort of move that up a bit. So I've kind of got a bit of a snare out of doo, sort of. It, might, it probably could have done with sort of uh, not fading out in volume quite as fast, but uh, it'll do for now. Uh, so let's also uh, do a, a bass drum. Um, in this case, we don't really want it to have that sort of sort of white noise quality. Uh, so we can get this this whole percussive thing just by just using this second trick of sort of ramping the tone down really quickly. In this case, a bass drum that sort of does. That that's kind of a very short, stabby sort of noise, so the volume should fall away quickly there. And as I say, we don't really want any noise there. So then we've got this very blippy sound, and then again we'll uh, uh, t we'll take this down to uh, yeah, wrong, yeah, wrong keys. Make this. Uh, the pitch slide uh, way down. Um, probably needs to go a bit faster than that. Okay, that's kind of uh, more, more what I'm looking for there. The, uh, so th this is all, all a, a bit of a sort of trial and error sort of thing. There's, we're n it's not like we're physically modelling these instruments or anything. So and we're only going to come so 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 close to it actually sounding like a real drum, but I think that's probably um, sort of good enough to work with now. So now I've got to decide what a drum beat for the Archer's theme is going to sound like. So um, so so let's okay. I'll try something like that. So it's four is my bass drum. So it's. Duh, duh, uh, duh, uh 
Have a little boom bass there. Uh, let's see, how does that go? Okay, um, and because I can't be bothered to figure that out for the second half, let's do a spot of cut and paste. So it's all very low level again. Uh, so that was, so we're still working in pattern one, uh, copying and paste pattern one, and that was zero to 23, paste to 24 to the end. So it's like copying from the first half of this pattern to the second half, and that was channel C. So yeah, it's takes a lot of experience to, to kind of remember what numbers to put in there, so um, let's see. Okay, so um, I think we're sort of get, definitely getting somewhere here. Um, so, what next? Um, Probably want a, sort of, uh, a bit of, uh, sort of accompaniment, so uh, a, bit, a, bit, a few chords to uh, add to that. Except um, this is where we kind of run into a bit of a problem because um, we've now that we've got the uh, the melody, the bass, and the uh, and, and the drums, we've uh, run out of uh, of channels to actually put notes into, and so. This is kind of the, the uh, sort of perennial problem that we run, it, run into with uh, sort of chip music if, if, if it's the, the real sort where you have these constraints. Uh, so we we'll need to find ways to kind of uh, insert our, our chords around these. And obviously chords consist of multiple notes being played at once, which um, I know we, we're going to have enough trouble of inserting a single note in, uh, in, in, in around what we've already got, so this is where we actually get to uh, what's probably the uh, the most distinctive thing about chip tunes, which is uh, arpeggios. So if you've got sort of several notes to play at once, like uh, a C chord, da, 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 then the then the trick is to to cycle between do 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 very fast so it's do 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 except faster than that so that um, it's well it it doesn't really sound like they're all playing at once but there's enough of an effect to pass to for it. and this is kind of the 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 sound that you would kind of always associate with kind of Mario soundtracks or whatever so this is under sort of um, ornaments uh, here so. Um, Ornaments again. This is an another way of the varying pitch over time, but this time this is measured in actual semitones. So we're working at the actual musical level rather than the uh, rather than this abstract frequencies thing. So at the moment we're just that's all zeros. So so I probably want uh, sort of a C major chord. So I think that's yeah. Now. I, I'm, I'm doing it so it's sticking at each note for two fiftieths of a second. I've found through experience that uh, if you do it, th this kind of leaves it with a nice melodic one. If you cycle through the notes too fast, it kind of becomes a, a bit harsh. Um, so let's uh, go for oh four seven, and let's uh, repeat this a couple of times. Um, usually, I'd sort of go through this whole the whole list of notes, but um, given that we're kind of a bit pushed for time, that's probably good enough. So there, you've got this son of uh, major chord there, as, and it's, uh, and you can kind of hear, while it is sort of cycling through the notes there, yeah, it's, it's sort of a decent, a decent enough recreation of actually playing that as a chord. So um, uh, let's uh, get another one to, so, so, do, do, so that's a da da da. Uh, let's, we probably want to do do do. So you go for yeah. nine. Okay, so uh, we'll uh, sort of start with those. We might find that we need more of these. Uh, as, as in pretty much everything in the sound tracker, there's sort of a quite a sort of severe limit of, to the number of samples and ornaments you can have. We've got uh, sort of 15 or 16 to play with. Um, I think we're not going to have time to fill that up, but uh, once, once you're actually sort of doing a sort of 
full length song, you can find yourself running into these and you have to make creative compromises. But uh, so let's let's see um let's see this is going to be a tricky one. So where where to uh, insert these. So I can uh, I could probably let's see it's th this kind of a, a, di a different problem to solve every time you write a song. I think we can probably get away with the uh, bass notes being sort of shortened, so it's it'll be. It's I guess it's kind of a ragtime sort of thing or something. So okay, so we've got our bass note there, and now we want this to be. Um, let's see, it's probably going to be this. That that octave. So let's. Um, so that was. Oh, yeah, um, we're probably going to want another sample at some point because uh, this is uh, the same volume as the main melody, which is uh, n is not no good. Um, uh, now I have to say. So F is the that's the code to say. Let's turn this into. Uh, let's use one of these ornaments. And in this case, we're using ornament number one. And if I sort of leave it sort of running like that, then so we hear that's kind of added the ornament to the bass line as well, which is sort of pretty horrible. So we're going to have to explicitly say turn that off when we're playing a bass note. So let's see. That's probably the second one. Let's um, see if that's sort of sounding vaguely passable now. Okay, so let's hear that again. Okay, um, maybe what I really need to do is sort of cut out some of these uh, bass notes so that it's uh, so, so that we've got a bit more time to actually hear that uh, accompaniment. So let's sort of chop out every other one. Uh, no, and let's. Uh. Okay. So uh, so while well, I'm going through sort of removing a few of these. Uh, that these uh, bass notes so to fit in some of the non bass ones. Okay, and since that second half is not quite the same as the first one, I don't think I can do my copy and paste trick, so I'll need to so quickly uh, go through and uh, sort of add those two. Um, uh, and that's that needs to be octave four. Uh, I'm going to remove that one. Uh, now we need a sort of minor note, uh, minor chord. So off to the ornament editor again. Let's see. Uh, let's just do one more repeat of those notes. Okay, uh, so that was uh, ornament number three, so let's hear where that goes again. Uh, oh, I'm going to stop that too early. So, as so then let's uh, so. So that's the uh, minor note we want. So now I think it's. Right, so I. Uh, 
Okay. No, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, that's actually sounding pretty good. I, like I said, I thought I would have to t take the volume of those accompaniment stabs down a bit, but I think that's working pretty well. It's, uh, c it's. Um, I think that that's quite a distinctive bit of our tune now, so uh, we can sort of bring that up in the mix, as it were. And uh, I think the fact it is also sort of fairly short stabs that then get sort of interrupted by the bass means that it's kind of not quite as prominent as the uh, melody there. I think it's time for a bit of hardware abuse um, of, of the very mild sort. Um, I'm not going to set fire to my uh, laptop or anything, but um, so th those bass notes, um, while we've kind of jazzed things up a bit, um, let's, uh, let's just focus on uh, this, this channel here. It, they're still sort of pre pretty plain. So that's the duh, duh, duh. It's, we can do something a bit more sort of exciting here. And um, this is uh, where, so, I th so this is where I, th I think we have to go back a bit into the history of like where the, the uh, AY chip um, originated from, because I get the impression that when they first designed it, they didn't really imagine that people would use it by sort of pushing data to it every 50th of a second like we've been doing all the way through this. It seems that they imagined that you would just send data to the chip uh, for when and just on every time you wanted to actually play a new actual musical note because obviously it can play a note under its own steam uh, if, if you're not bothered about doing all fancy effects to it. So they, they probably imagined that's how people would use this chip. Uh, so, but then th they evidently realised that, well, th this is just going to result in tunes where all the music notes are just going to be a flat B sort of, sort of sound. So let's throw our users a bone here. And so they came up with the idea of envelopes, which is uh, 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 a bit of functionality on board the chip, which would allow you to, to vary the volume of that note over time, and it would so you'd be able to set the rather than having just but just a flat volume, have it say that it will fade away at a certain time, then maybe it will sort of repeat. Uh, there's a few different options, um, which is sort of a nice thought of, of them, but um, as it happens, this is sort of pretty much completely useless because um, uh, we, we've already sort of been doing our sort of sample editing to uh, vary our volume over time and doing this in software is uh, it's a lot more flexible. We could, for example, do something that sort of goes down and then sort of ramps up slightly to get sort of one, one, one sort of sound, which you couldn't do on the onboard facilities. So I'd say this, this bit of this feature of the chip is pretty much useless, except for one thing, which is that if because you can sort of control how long it takes for the envelope to fade away, what if we uh, sort of ramped up the, uh, the the speed of this so it's actually fading the, the so the volume is fading away much much faster than one fiftieth of a second at that point, and then we set it to repeatedly do that. At that point, we've actually moved out of the sort of volume domain, and it's actually become a w an audio waveform in its own right. So when I said at the beginning that the uh, AY chip can only do square waves, that uh, wasn't uh, exactly true. It can also be tricked into doing sort of triangular and sawtooth waves. Um, but uh, the uh, the downside of this is, um, like so many things here, it's uh, um, you have to sort of work with it at a very low level because because this is kind of like, as I say, hardware abuse. This is with the this kind of speed that you're actually setting the envelopes to are sort of right at the sort of edge of the tolerance of uh, of what it was designed for, uh, which means that you don't really have much resolution to control uh, exactly what pitch this happens at. So. It, so you can't reliably match it to uh, an actual musical tone. I think the um, the Atari VCS has a similar sort of uh, issue for yeah, crazy people who write uh, who write music on that because that that was not designed for music at all. So it's they kind of have a kind of very because 
they're, they're kind of working with this very limited resolution that doesn't always match to musical notes, then they kind of have to compose their music out of this sort of reduced scale. And so it's, um, it's even more hardcore than I'm uh, prepared to go. But uh, so luckily we can sort of, uh, we, we can make the best of this though by using it for the uh, like the baseline of uh, of uh, where can because the sort of note lengths are a lot uh, uh, the 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 periods are longer then you've got a bit more control so um let's uh, start sort of dropping in uh, some of these then so these are rather than using the uh, f command which is for the ornaments uh we can uh, it's uh, it's the ones to use it's uh, it's a and c um i think c is kind of that's like the sawtooth which is a harsher thing so um let's um let, let, let's see how that goes so and because th this is actually happening on top of the existing square wave, you can actually get some interesting distortion effects where if it's not exactly in tune, then it will kind of go in and out of phase. So let's, uh, let's see how this goes then. So that's, that's our, our note at the moment. Uh, so let's um, try adding, let's see. So at the moment, so zero is that's the fastest. So let's slow that down to, so here you can see as we're, setting the speed of it to like 24 and oh yeah by the way this is in hex just to throw another spanner in the works um so we can so as i say with the, we we can't sort of reliably tune this to actual musical notes so we're required to do this in hex values and kind of tune it by hand so we want to try and find a, a frequency that sort of fits well with that so it's so let's see that one, that's quite well. Let's see what the ones either side are. Um, okay, let's uh, go um, one octave down, actually. Um, I don't know what 2D multiplied by 2. Oh, it's probably 5, 8. Or actually, um, actually, no, I like the first one better. So... So yeah, so what's it? Right, so what, what 2D we're going for there. So, so yeah, let's um, so find all of our notes here, our Fs. Um, so that's a, a G. So that will be a slightly fa higher and faster one. So it will be uh, so it'll be C. So like two. So wait, that sounds right. So. again there. Uh, there so down a bit more yep that sounds about right and up again so that's for that two so, so you can see I, I'm kind of having to sort of adjust this by hand till it sounds right because there's, uh, there's a no guarantee that you will actually match this up to a real musical note. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see what our newly pimped up uh, theme tune sounds like there. Um, oh, sounding a bit better. Yep. That's it. Um, so. Um, so now we've got sort of a, a, a bit, bit of time left. Let's uh, we can let's try and move on to a, a, the second uh, second half of the uh, the theme. And um, let, let's tr actually. I'm I'm enjoying that bass line quite a bit. So let's try and make this one a bit more sort of bassy then. Uh, so. Let's see. So f oh, melody first, though. So, so that's uh, so. So then, uh, da. um, actually, no, hold. 
rather than that, I'll, I'll do the melody first, then, then add the these uh, the, these samples. Uh, adding the uh, sample so is it two for the long notes sounding okay um, let's see uh, yes yeah, so, so save a bit of time let's uh, copy and paste the uh, the drums from uh, um, pattern one so that was channel C uh, so, uh, and luckily we didn't have to stick any of our our chords into that that one, so that should be uh, pretty. Interesting. Okay, that's sounding good. So, as I say, we're going to make this a bit more sort of bass heavy this time. So it's. Uh, so I see. So I think we went for like no. Tones around the twenty mark here. Let's take that down to. And that's. Okay, uh, that's. So okay, so let's go for to sort of, uh, play that for one one note, and then they have a the accompaniment. Do all the bass notes first. Actually, let's stick that an octave down. Ah, yes, I should have done it. Done that. Nice fat note. Should have done that all the way through, really. Okay, and let's stick in our uh, accompaniments here. So, so then let's another of those chords. Not quite the one. Uh, it's do do do. So it's another one that we don't have. Okay, let's just stick that one for now. Let's not bother repeating. Uh, okay, yep, yeah, there you go.
Okay, so let's uh, put both of those halves together. So, as I say, so now we've uh, moved on to a, a second pattern. So, in position one, we have pattern one, and in position two, we have pattern two. So, we didn't actually get to do any repeating there. But, um, okay, so let's see what our uh, sort of finished tune sounds like. Big thanks to Matt Westcott. We have five minutes for questions, so if you've got a quick question, and it should be quick, please come up to the microphones. <laughs> okay, I'm just saving it first, because I think this is a good one. I'm going to keep it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, hang on, hi, that's a weird book there. <laughs> Question at the back. I don't have a question. I just wanted to say it's brilliant. Thank you very much for this big show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes. Come to the microphone, please. I have a question for the audience, actually. Do the non-Brits in the audience actually know what the Archers is? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Show of hands. Hands up if you actually know what the Archers is. OK, that's... Um, <laughs> hands, hands up if, you, if you're hands not British. if you know and you're not British. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's, it is a very British thing. It's, uh, it's a, a, a soap opera on the radio. Uh, it's set sort of in the countryside, so most of the storylines are... Well, I, actually, I, I, I could be horribly misrepresenting it because I'm, I'm not a follower of it myself, but it's all about sheep getting stolen and things, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> like I say, very British. No, sorry. Oh, microphone. Can we have the fun mic up, please? Ah, I'm not sure if this is a question for you. Uh, how does this compare to, for instance, punch cards on dance organs? Um, can you compare? I suppose, yeah, I can kind of see, see the similarity of, uh, yeah, it's, it's um, music, so, yeah, it's uh, ver vertically as, uh, uh, over time. I suppose... In that case, you could sort of think of that as kind of an extreme version of this, where we've got three channels. Uh, I suppose like a player piano would be like 80 channels, except each one is just one tone. But uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah, an, an interesting thought. Yeah, there's uh, definite parallels there. Yeah. Do you happen to have a copy of your Darude Sandstorm cover? Oh, that the yes. audience could listen to. Oh, yeah. Let's, okay, I think we've got time for this. Yeah, okay. Particularly if you've got the video to go with it. Yes, I, I, do, I believe we can do that. Yes. Yes. Um, okay, so it's. Um, good, okay. Um, it's going to do tap. Sorry, what's um, the song called? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yep, this will be the one. Uh, it's okay. Um, actually, no, it should be on. It's Okay. Yes. 
<laughs> it has lyrics. Okay guys, I'm afraid that's all the time we've got, so huge thanks to Matt Westcott. <laughs>